Hi everybody, welcome back to Read the Reef, my name's Ross. In this video, I'm going to be adding a new crab to the tank, plus a couple of corals, and we'll take a look at how the algae's doing. Okay, hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, once again a massive thank you for joining us on this video Totally do appreciate every one of you who have subscribed recently If you haven't subscribed you could do that, it would mean a massive amount to me um, So yeah, let's take a look at this then So this week I've been across at Ness's Lair again um, That's my LFS, they also do sponsor the channel So don't forget, Bearded Reef 10 will get you 10% off there They will ship across the UK for you as well So anything you need, get in touch with the guys, order it in for you Or if they've got it in stock then perfect Anyway, so yeah, this week I went across the Nessie's Lair and picked up a new crab and a couple of corals for the tank. So, um, the new crab that I got is one I looked at previously when I was in and I actually forgot all about it. So, I was meant to get it last time, forgot all about it, so I've been picked it up this weekend. So yeah, we'll take a look. Um, I've got them sitting here just now. Again, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see these on the camera just now, but I'll just show you them anyway. But this is the first one. and. This here is an arrow crab, or an arrow head crab. Um, that's it there again, I'm just going to get it out of light again. But That's the first thing that I got. A um, couple of different corals as well, but I'm going to get these acclimated. Um, I know somebody picked up the last time when I was doing this that you know, I had the bags floating with the light on. That was purely just for the video, I don't actually do that, switch the light off when I'm floating the bags. So I'll float the bags for a bit, get them up to temperature, and then we'll get them acclimated. Now when it comes to acclimating them, I've always done it using just a bit of airline tubing and tying a knot in it to get the drips right. I've actually went ahead and bought this Aquavation kit. Um, I bought this off Amazon. I think it's basically just the same, an airline, but it's got a couple of little valves and so on, so it should hopefully make things a bit easier. But I'll use this to acclimate these. Um, I do this the same way as I do all my corals, fish, cleanup crew. Um, just a kind of drip method. Run about two drips a second is what I do. Um, and that just allows the water to acclimate and change over, get everything used to it, especially with some kind of fragile cleanup crews and so on. Um, anyway, like I've said before, I don't think anybody wants to see me doing that. Um, I'm going to be just cutting a couple of little clips here of doing it just so people can see the way I do it, but it's not an exciting process. So I'll go ahead, get these guys acclimated, get them in the tank, show you them, and see what you think. Okay, so like I said there, um, I've got this Aquavation Acclimate kit here. Um, so I'll just open it up there just now. It is really the most basic of kits ever. Comes with your two lengths of airline here. You don't even need to cut them, it's just got two lengths for you. And in this little bag you have a valve which you can control the flow with. And a little suction cup to cut on. So literally all you're doing is putting in the tank, setting your valve up and into that. Um, it's that easy. So I'll go ahead and set that up just now and we'll try it out. Okay, so this is the Arrowhead Crab. Um, this is just in the bucket, ready to get acclimated just now, but I just thought I'd give you a little view of it from above. Um, so you can see what it's like. Really cool little shape to this guy, as you can see there. Um, he's kind of got two little blue pincers as such, and obviously the arrow shaped head on him. So yeah, I actually really like this guy. He's um, something a bit different anyway. So yeah, I'll get him acclimated, I'll we'll get him in the tank, and I'll show you guys once he's in the tank. Um, I probably will give you a bit of an overview on these, just exactly what they are and all about them. Um, I know a couple of people enjoyed when I geeked out about previous stuff before, so I'm going to give you a little bit of information about this guy in a minute anyway. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see that, but that is basically the speed that I do my drip acclimation at. So, that's it there, I just usually close the lid of the box over it, but I'm just holding it just now. Um, this is the new Fabio that I got. And there's a little mushroom there, but I'll show you these in the tank anyway. Um, this really doesn't do the colours on this one justice, but I just wanted to show you the speed that I do my, my trip out here. Um, so yeah. Okay, so like I said, um, I'm going to go over just a little bit and kind of geek out a bit about the, the arrow crab here. So um, as you can see, this is the arrow crab that I've got. Um, kind of obvious reasons why they're called the arrow crab. You can kind of see they've got kind of spidery long legs, um, kind of spindle type legs, and the arrow shaped head on them. Um, that's obviously what gives it its name. So, a couple of different species of arrow crabs. Um, 
the one I've got here seems to be the most common one, it's a kind of standard um, arrow crab that you get. Some people again call them spider crabs and so on, but this is the arrow crab anyway. So they're from um, coral reefs, usually about 10 to 30 foot deep, um, where they hide in kind of caves, crevices between the rocks and so on. Um, they will come out during the day, most of the night time to hunt. Now in my tank with this one, it's been out most of the day, to be honest with you, so it's out quite a lot. Um, they're also actually known to live within the tentacles of anemones, so if you've got an anemone in your tank, it probably will live around about that. Um, mine seems to be hosting a Duncan quite a lot just now, so obviously it's a similar kind of thing. So, yeah, um, they vary in size from kind of 6 to 10 inches, depending on what you've got. Now, my one is relatively small. I would say mine's only a couple of inches across, so I've got a very small one here. Um, the females tend to be smaller than males, but again, quite hard to, to sex that, so... Um, yeah, that's that's really the kind of basics of it anyway. Um, coloration, they can kind of vary from a kind of golden or kind of yellow colour, cream. Mine's is more a kind of golden brown colour just now. Um, there is some interesting colours throughout it, but they do kind of vary quite a bit. So I'll move on to um, the behaviour probably is best to go to next. So they will move quite rapidly around the, the tank. Um, they'll scuttle across the rocks. They kind of move like spiders actually, so they're quite interesting to watch. Um, however, they are extremely territorial and they're predators in nature, so it can be kind of useful if you've got an infestation of, say, bristle worms in your tank. Um, they will hoover up all the bristle worms in your tank, so if you don't want any bristle worms, these are the guys to fling in there. Um, they will also keep your tank pretty tidy as well. They'll eat all the bits of eating food, scraps and so on, any kind of dead organic materials that's there, they'll find that in the substrate and they'll eat it. Um, the one that I've got has been eating all the algae in my tank. Um, I've been sitting watching it, it picks off bits of algae and eats that, so... Although everything I've done online research-wise says they are predators, they do eat a lot of algae as well. This is one of the reasons I got this crab actually, was that um, Jamie at Nessie's lair when I was over there, he actually showed me it in the tank and it was sitting feasting on algae quite a lot. So, you know, he actually says to me, I can take this, try it out, see what it's like. So, I bought the crab, um, brought it back home and I've tried it here and touch wood anyway, it seems to be doing quite well. However, the behaviour can be a problem in some tanks, um, as they've been known to attack some kind of crustaceans, including likes of shrimps and so on, crabs, they will um, attack any slow moving fish and so on, um, and also pick at polyps of some soft corals while they're foraging for food. Now, while they're not eating the corals, they might pick at some of them. Um, again, a lot of you will be thinking this raises massive warning signs here. Mine's touchwood has been pretty good, I've been keeping it well fed, you know, every time when I feed um, the mysis to my fish. It pops out, grabs some mice, and away it goes again, and it's quite happy. So I will keep an eye on it, but I know it can kind of predate on any slower fish. Now, I don't really have any slow fish in the tank, um, and, you know, other than picking at some zoas or something, which it might do, I've not witnessed that. I haven't seen any of my zoas sulking because of that, so I don't really know, but I'll keep an eye on it anyway. Um, they do molt, like kind of most species do, so um, I did actually see this molting the other night, it was quite impressive to see, such a, you know, a tiny little legs and so on, but it molted the full body, so that was quite cool to see, um, so don't panic if you see what you think is a dead crab kind of sitting there that is actually just a molt. Um, so yeah, they are kind of easy to care for, to be honest, you just need to make sure that your DKH levels are also kind of up there and steady, obviously they use, um, they kind of create their exoskeleton using that, so you can feed them a kind of calcium supplement if you want. I haven't done that, I've just been feeding them mysis. Um, but yeah, there are any kind of standard water conditions and so on they'll be happy with. Um, kind of your, your standard range of, of parameters is what these guys are really after. Um, not much more anything difficult from that, like I say, just just make sure you keep any slow moving fish out of the way of them. Um, when it comes to breeding, so you can only really have one in the tank, they are really territorial, so you're unlikely to be able to breed them anyway, but if you did have more than one, it's almost impossible to breed them in the kind of home aquarium due to the nature of the species, their spawning behaviour and so on. Um, they do lay eggs and I think it's the female that carries the eggs around. Um, however, you can purchase these pretty much anywhere to be honest. A lot of the, the shops will get these in for you if they don't already have them. Like I say, I got mine from Nessie's Lair. I believe, um, I think they're £25 in Nessie's Lair. Um, you'll get these round about that kind of price anyway and yeah, they're a brilliant addition to the, the cleanup crew tank. Just one other thing I want to touch on here was um, a couple of things that I really had questions about. Um, general one, are the reefs safe? Now, the kind of the advice you'll get is reef safe with caution. 
that sometimes rings alarm bells to people um, thinking, oh no, they're going to destroy it. Now, if they're underfed, they don't have any food, they might pick at some of your soft, soft coral polyps. Keep them fed, they should be fine. Um, here's one for you, their legs. Now, if they lose a limb or a pincer or anything, which can happen as part of the molting process or due to an injury or fighting with something, that will grow back. So don't worry, you know, if you see it losing a leg or a pincer or something, it will grow back. Um, yeah, I don't think I really need to go on much more about these, but yeah, it's actually something that will add a touch of kind of bizarre, unusual kind of thing to your reef tank. So if you're looking for that, something a bit, little bit different, then I can recommend the, the arrow crab. So yeah, like I say, I think I've talked enough about this just now, but we'll move on. But that is um, a kind of basic overview of arrow crabs and um, really what I've read about them, to be honest with you. So if you're looking for one, like I say, Nessie's Lair's got them. You can get them shipped out to you. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Okay, so that's the coral and cleanup crew being added. Um, we'll go ahead now and we'll just do a little bit, have a look at the, the algae that's been going on. Um, I'll give you a little run through the tank and just show you what's been happening with the algae, how I've been clearing it up and so on. Um, I've been using the Flux RX to clear that up, so I showed you that in the last video. But, like I said, we'll take a little look at that just now and I'll show you quite how the algae's doing as well. Okay, so I'm not going to talk through this one, I'm just going to let it play, but I just want to show you this. It's going to be under um, blue lights first, then we'll go to the, the whites after that. As you can see, there seems to be some form of cyanide forming in the rocks, although people are warming about this already with the Flux RX that can happen. But yeah, I'll just let the video play, I'll let you see the tank. Um, if only I had listened for a while I would have told you I miss your smile I thought of you as a friend who can't let go But when you left I could feel it grow Like a body of water Okay, so um, like I say, that's that's basically my new cleanup crew and corals added to the tank. So that clip there was obviously once it settled in a little bit. Um, I really, really do like these guys. Actually, I know it's it's quite a simple thing, but um, that's them added anyway. So yeah, thanks very much for watching the video, folks. Um, hope you've enjoyed this one as well. Once again, thanks very much for all your help and advice for the algae cleanup that we've been doing. Um, Hopefully you guys have, have really enjoyed seeing the difference there. I mean, there is a slight difference just now, but hopefully there will be a bigger difference the following week. I mean, that's almost two weeks now. So, yeah, um, once again, thanks very much for watching the video. Hope you're all staying safe out there. Um, take care, folks. Bye-bye.